Hey there, this is Zeb, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the solo growth model. So the solo growth model begins with a production function. A production function is just a mathematical relationship between inputs, that is the things that you use to produce goods and services, and output. So essentially, a production function tells us how much output can we make given the amount of inputs that we have. And so in our simple version of the solo model, we are going to say that output is a function of two inputs. So the first input is going to be capital. Capital is just goods and services used to make other goods and services. And then the second input is going to be labor, which we'll use the letter N for employment. So this is our production function. Now, this is a growth model, and sometimes growth models work with just the overall production function for an economy, but we are interested especially in standards of living. And of course, one of the things that can affect output is the number of workers, but we're interested in output kind of for a given worker, because we know that a person's standard of living depends on his or her ability to produce goods and services, so we want to look at output per worker. So in order to do that, we are going to divide both sides of our production function by the number of workers. So when we do that, we get Y over N. So that's going to be output per worker. And that's going to be a function then of K over N, which is capital per worker, and N over N. So of course, there's exactly one worker per worker. So this is equal to function of K over N and one, and the one here is just extraneous, so we can rewrite this, we can just change the functional form, we'll use a lowercase f, so we get this, all right? So all this tells us is that output per worker is a function of capital per worker, all right? So here we have our production function. Now, there are only two other parts to the solo model, all right? So this tells us the production function tells us that output in the economy, standard of living, essentially, is dependent upon the amount of capital that workers have available to them, right? the amount of capital per worker. So the question is, what is it that determines capital per worker? Well, capital per worker in the steady state, so steady state capital per worker, that is equilibrium capital per worker, is really going to depend on two things. So the first thing that's going to affect the steady state capital per worker level is investment per worker. So investment per worker. This is the rate at which capital is being added, right? So the higher the investment level, the faster capital is being added. The lower the investment level, the slower capital is being added. Now this is going to depend on the savings rate. So the investment per worker is going to depend on the saving rate in an economy, which we will call S. And S is just going to be some rate. Of course, you can save no less than 0% of your overall economy's output, and you can save no more than 100%. So S is just going to be some number between zero and one. So investment per worker then is going to be, so investment per worker is going to be that saving rate times what is available to be saved. Well, you can save output, right? What you produce, that's what you can save. So investment per worker is going to be the savings rate times output per worker which is of course equal to S times F of K over N, right? These things are exactly the same. So investment per worker then is going to be the saving rate times our production function essentially, or times output per worker. So this is the rate at which capital is added. Now, of course, the other thing that determines steady state capital is going to be the rate at which we lose capital per worker. So we've just found investment per worker. That's the saving rate times output. That's how quickly capital gets added. Now we need to think about how 
quickly we're losing capital or the rate at which we are losing capital. So that's going to be what we call depreciation. per worker. So we have depreciation per worker. Now we're going to assume that capital depreciates at some constant rate. Right? So we have a depreciation rate which we will call delta. Right? So capital is depreciating at some constant rate. So for this, uh, so given this, we can write depreciation per worker as delta times the capital stock, right? Capital is what wears out. So what's what have we done? Well, by finding the rate at which capital gets added and the rate at which we're losing capital, we're able to solve for the steady state capital level in an economy. So essentially this is the equilibrium. So in the steady state, we're going to have investment per worker equaling depreciation per worker. So we have in the steady state, investment per worker is going to be equal to depreciation per worker. Now, why is that the steady state? Why is the economy tending toward that? Well, just imagine, suppose that the investment per worker is greater than depreciation per worker. This means that capital is being added more quickly than it is wearing out. And so if capital is being added faster than it's wearing out, we know that the capital stock per worker is rising. So this implies that K over N is rising. So let me move some stuff up out of the way. And of course, we also have the opposite. If investment per worker is less than depreciation per worker, that means that capital is being added at a slower rate than it is wearing out. And so for this reason, if this is the case, we have that capital per worker is falling. Well, of course, neither one of those is stable. All right. In the one case, capital per worker is rising. In the other case, capital per worker is falling. So this is going to tend to push to that point where our investment per worker equals depreciation per worker. So in the steady state, we expect to see investment per worker equal to depreciation. And in that case, the capital stock per worker is neither rising nor falling. So now I want to take just a couple of minutes and go very quickly through some of the graphics of this model. Okay, so we're going to start by plotting a production function. Now our input is going to be capital per worker. Our output here is going to be output per worker. And so our production function looks something like this. So this is just a function of k over n. All right, so this is our production function. Now, saving or investment per worker, we know that saving, you can't save more than 100%. You can't save less than 0% of your output. So if we were to plot saving as a function of output here, it's going to be slightly below or somewhere below anyway, that production function. So investment per worker probably looks something like this. All right, so here's our investment per worker. So that's two pieces now of the solo model that we need. One is the production function, the other is investment per worker, the other is depreciation. And so we know that capital depreciates at some constant rate delta. And so we can plot the depreciation per worker. It's just going to be this straight line. And there's depreciation per worker. So the steady state, remember, in the steady state, that's where we have that depreciation per worker equals investment per worker. So investment per worker here 
is equal to depreciation per worker. And that happens at this point right here, where these two intersect. So this is going to be our steady state capital per worker level. We'll call it K over N star. And of course, at that steady state capital per worker level, our economy's output is going to be Y over N star. We go up to the production function to find this. So there you have it. That's the simple solo growth model. I'm going to do one more video after this. And in that one, we will talk about what happens when you change some of these different rates like the saving rate or depreciation rate, or if you incorporate technological progress into your model. So I will see you then.